Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're going to be doing a series of sponsored videos here on the channel over the next week or two on the Synology Disk Station Surveillance Station app. And this comes built into every Synology NAS device, and what it lets you do is connect up off-the-shelf IP cameras like this one here over your network, and it turns your device here uh, into a full-fledged security camera system in addition to doing all the other things that it does. And it's a, a pretty robust system. They have a new version, version 8, that we'll be featuring in this video, so you can see uh, how it works, how to set it up, and what it does. And we'll be doing the what it does uh, in this video, followed by some more in-depth stuff in the next two. Now, this is a paid sponsorship from Synology. I do have these videos from time to time here on the channel for brands that uh, I can get behind and trust. In fact, I use a Synology disk station every day uh, for both my home and business use, and I really do uh, like their products quite a bit. Uh, they are reviewing this content before it is posted. They have also suggested some of the things that we cover in this video as well, and it will be appearing on their website as well as here on the channel. All right, so let's take a closer look at how Surveillance Station 8.0 works, and we're going to start with the hardware we're going to use in this demonstration. We have a DS416J from Synology. This is one of their uh, lower-powered devices. It's powered by a 32-bit ARM processor, and surprisingly, the overhead of uh, Surveillance Station running right now is not very high. It's only using about 10% of the CPU, and only about 30% of the RAM is in use, so we still have plenty of uh, overhead remaining for uh, running file sharing and other tasks on this device, even when it's running as a full-time surveillance station. Uh, now, right now, we only have one camera connected. Uh, in the next video, we'll add a second one so we can see uh, what kind of impact that might have on performance. But the good news is I think you can go in with a pretty low-end device and uh, get decent performance. Now, the camera we have hooked up right now is an off-the-shelf camera here. It's an Amcrest 1080p Wi-Fi Ethernet camera. Right now, it's connected via Wi-Fi to my network. Uh, the Synology here is also connected to the network, and the camera is transmitting constantly to the Synology here, and the Synology is recording and looking for motion events uh, in the software that you're about to see. And one of the things that I like about what Synology has been doing is uh, essentially replicating many different cloud services in their boxes for free. So this all runs on your own network. You can choose whether or not to make it internet accessible, but none of this relies on a uh, Synology server somewhere to work. It is all in your home. You own it all. All the data stays on your box in your house unless you choose to send it someplace place else. And the nice part about that is that there's no monthly fee with it. So once you buy this box, uh, you get the software built in. You can connect initially uh, two cameras to it for free, and they have additional license packs when you want to go beyond two cameras. But uh, for many homes, two might be enough. And if you want to add a few more, it's not all that much more money to uh, get those additional camera licenses. Now, it's compatible with over 5,000 off-the-shelf cameras like this one. Uh, this is a pan and tilt camera, which you'll see in a second when we get into the software. I'll put a link down below below in the video description to their uh, full compatibility list because the chances are you might have one of these little cameras in your home. You probably got frustrated with some of the interfaces on these uh, cameras and uh, the nice thing is you get a nice clean Synology interface with it that uh, works with uh, many different branded cameras the same way. So you really do get a way to centralize all this different stuff that you might have laying around your house and you've got the full capacity of a rather large disk array to store all of the video from it. All right, so let's take a closer look now at how Surveillance Station operates on the software side. It installs via the package center, uh, which is part of the web interface of every Synology NAS device. And it's a really slick interface. I've covered it in the past, so uh, definitely check out some of my other videos on that. Uh, so I've already got mine installed here. I'm just going to click on it to load it up. Now, right now, it's running inside of Firefox, but you can also install a native client on Windows and on Mac, which I'll show you in a second, which is a little faster. So if you have uh, one of those two platforms, which I think most people do, uh, that I think would be the preferred way to work with it, but uh, you can also get at it in a web browser when you need to. So I'm going to pull up the live view here, and uh, that'll give us a, a view of what the camera is seeing. And remember, we're still in our web browser here, and I'll go up to my two-up view, and uh, you can see the camera now, and I can move and uh, tilt the camera uh, with the interface here. And what's cool about this is that uh, this interface is the same no matter which camera brand you're using, because what this surveillance station does is it centralizes all of your cameras, no matter the hardware maker, into a common interface, and uh, they all work through the NAS device here and not on their own anymore, which is uh, really helpful, especially if you want to mix and match your camera types. Now, this camera has a zoom on it. It's a digital zoom, uh, but if we had a mechanical zoom on this particular camera, uh, the interface, of course, would work with that. So that is the 
uh, the web version. You also have the ability to look at a timeline and uh, configure your cameras from here as well. But I want to show you uh, what the Windows client looks like. So let's click on the surveillance station icon here and it will pull up our login screen. Now I'm connecting via a local IP right now, but I could connect, of course, to a public IP over the internet or use a VPN or something like that. You also have the option to connect via HTTPS and that also includes the uh, web version too. So you really have flexibility to use this locally, remotely, both or uh, one or the other. Uh, so now we have this interface pulled up on the Windows client. It is a little faster than uh, what you saw on the web version, so it does feel a little snappier. The video frame rate is more uh, fluid on it as well, so I uh, definitely prefer using their native client to the web interface whenever I can. I want to show you now the timeline, and what I've been doing with uh, my particular box here is having it record everything and then look for motion events. And it's good to have that so you have some context, because if uh, somebody swipes a package off your porch, uh, you might want to see what was happening before that, maybe when the person was walking up before the motion sensing got them, uh, so you can have more of an idea as to uh, who the perpetrator was that you might want to be able to catch. So what I have here is about two days worth of recordings, and you can click on each calendar entry to uh, get that specific date pulled up, and then it stores uh, all the recordings, and then also gives you an indication as to when it detected motion going on uh, in a particular scene. So I'm going to go over here to today, and uh, we had a mail delivery around 2.45 or so, so I'm going to go uh, down to that spe uh, specific part of of the uh, recording here. And you can zoom in these motion events a little bit, especially if they are very brief uh, things that occurred. So I'm going to go right to when he pulls up here. You can see him backing the truck into uh, the driveway there. And here he is. And I can uh, slow down the video if I want to get a better look at him here and uh, then maybe pull some screenshots off or something like that. So you do have the ability to uh, very finely control when you what you see and when you see it, as well as have the context of uh, the entire recording. So I can see him here dropping things off. And then because I'm recording everything, I can also see him drive away and, and have the timestamp of that event. And then uh, when nothing's going on, I'm still having a recording of that taken. Again, just for uh, context purposes, and it's good to have that, I think. Uh, you can configure this, and I'll show you this in the upcoming video, uh, to delete video after a certain amount of time. So maybe you want to have it uh, wipe the video off the disk after five days or something, or maybe just wipe off the non-motion events and keep the motion events. Uh, you do have a lot of flexibility as to how you make this work. But with storage being so cheap these days, it's probably good to have as much context as you can can uh, in order to capture all of this stuff. And again, we'll be covering this in more depth uh, in the upcoming video. All right, so now I've got my iPhone loaded up here, and I just got a notification from uh, DS Cam that the surveillance station has detected motion. So one of the cool things you can do with this uh, application is connect it up with uh, your iPhone or your Android phone, and it works via their native push notification function. So you can have it uh, get you a regular push notification, not using text or anything else, just through the uh, standard iOS or Android push notification infrastructure, which is pretty cool. So what will happen is this will uh, connect up with Synology. Synology sends out the push notification, but no other data is sent, just the notification that you had some motion on your network, and then you can load up the app and take a, a closer look as to what's going on. You can also have it do it through more traditional means like text message or email, uh, but this uh, push notification thing is kind of a neat uh, way to do it. So I can pull up the app here and I can get into my camera. So if I got one of those notifications and uh, saw that there was some motion going on in my network, I can log in remotely if you have your Synology configured for that and then move the camera around here and try to figure out what's going on. So you do have the ability to use uh, your phone to connect back up with this. And again, it's the same interface no matter which camera you're connecting to. So you choose the camera you want on the list and then you can go in and take a look at it. There's a few other things you can do too. I can take a snapshot and have it uh, save it into the app here. So if I see something going on and I want to uh, give it to the police immediately, I can hit the snapshot button to download a, a still image into my uh, device here, which I can then find on the snapshots uh, roll here and uh, give it to the police officer. It actually takes the still image right from the camera and not just the screenshot. So you get a pretty detailed image here, as you can see, of what uh, just transpired. I can also download it into my uh, camera roll too, if you wish to do something like that. I also have access to all the uh, camera recordings that are currently stored on the device. You don't get that timeline functionality at the moment uh, like you get on the desktop version, but you can go to a specific time and then watch what's going on. I have my recordings go in 30 minute increments here, so you can kind of scroll through and see uh, what was going on there. So really cool stuff here uh, on the mobile app. And we're going to cover all of this in more detail in the upcoming video. So we're going to look at how to set it up, how to work with multiple cameras, uh, how to get everything configured from a notification and uh, motion zone uh, setup standpoint. So a lot of cool stuff we're going to be covering in more depth, but I did want to give you this overview first uh, to see how Surveillance Station works. We'll be back very soon with our Synology Disk Station here, and this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. 
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.